Greetings, everyone. This is Danny Knox from Parallels Software. I want to thank you for joining up with us today. This is the Parallels Mac Management for Microsoft Endpoint Management version 8.6 Deep Dive Demo. Oh, I think I got that all in there. Um, yeah, we're going to be looking at some really interesting ways of bringing the Macs in that may be on the periphery, right? It's uh, you know, 95% Windows management and some percentage of something else. And a lot of times that something else are those Mac devices that are just kind of like black boxes to us. They're kind of unknowns. We're not sure what to do with them. Uh, well, actually, there's a lot of us that think there's probably some things we could do with those other than manage them inside of an enterprise. But we're going to show you some really, really interesting ways of you know, taking advantage of the things you already have, namely being Microsoft Endpoint Management. So uh, buckle up. We're about an hour's worth of uh, demo time here. I promise it won't be death by PowerPoint. Uh, we will be jumping over into some virtual machines. A um, uh, little bit of housekeeping. Questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and throw those into the QA chat window, and uh, we'll get to those during the, the demo itself. Um, some of those we may have to save towards the end of the demo, but uh, we'll see how much we can how much we can bring in today. All right, let's get moving. Here we are, empowering IT, right? That's the whole thought process here, right? We want to give over a lot of really cool ways of, of doing cross-platform management, right? There's a lot of different things happening um, in our infrastructures, right? And uh, we need a lot of different answers. And so uh, Parallels Mac Management is one of those. We're on the uh, right in the middle there on the far right is our parallels desktop for mac business edition uh probably know that from uh running windows on a mac right that's what we're known for doing but that's actually over a hundred different operating systems we can run on a mac uh, so uh, drag and drop cut and paste um, boot camp is now dead inside of big sur so uh, that doesn't happen anymore so folks are scrambling looking for ways of running another operating system on top of um, the you know the operating system that they have if that's mac os they may be looking for windows or linux or some other distro we can definitely do that on the far left that is parallels remote application server kind of a timely topic oops not for there for here for parallels RAS. that's where we want to go today um, looking at uh, some ways to deliver content out to anybody anywhere anytime um, whether that be uh, a delivered application, a virtual machine, uh, getting those resources out uh, to folks where they're at and, and when they need it, especially in these days, right? Um, so uh, very nice collaboration here of, um, you know, remote application server, uh, a lot of underlying Microsoft technology that you probably, uh, probably already have in place that we're going to sit on top of uh, to, to make all this happen. Uh, so uh, if you're looking for ways of extending out applications and desktops, uh, really consider that RAS uh, remote application server from Parallels. All right, we're talking about uh, virtual machines. We want to really talk about, um, you know, managing Macs today. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So a uh, little bit of versional information. Um, we just released uh, about maybe two weeks ago uh, version 8.6. So I'm going to go over a couple of versions worth of um, uh Features that we've been able to, you know, ramp in and, you know, kind of get, uh, get up to speed up, uh, up here with. So, um, version eight, uh, was released back in 2019. Um, we brought in support for Apple Volume Purchase Program. So you get a corporate ID and a token and synchronize that inside of Configuration Manager. And we can bring in all that content for you then to make application deployments uh, to those Mac endpoints. Ability to report custom inventory data, kind of like MOF or MIF files. So we do normal inventory off of a Mac. But if you're looking to bring in um, a little deeper um, kind of a read on a Mac, you know, there is some pretty interesting stuff on those devices that just isn't regular inventory. We can do that as well. A uh, new task sequence step, which sounds kind of odd, right? A Mac. Well, we can do uh, task sequences. And one of those is installing configuration profiles using an MDM. That's really important these days with Big Sur. Uh, support for active Red Forest design, aka also known as enhanced security and administrative environment. Uh, that's one of the most secure active directory postures you can have. Uh, we've got customers in the gaming industry that need to have this uh, level of ringed security around active directory. So uh, AD Red Forest design will do that. We simply do a query on our install process to see what posture you may be in. If if you have that AD Red Forest design, then we'll install, you know, with that in mind. So nothing really that you do. We we just take a, you know, take a deeper look at, at what your AD structure looks like and make sure that we're as secure as Microsoft wants that to be. And then IPv6 support was built in. Uh, nothing that you do uh, for that as well. Uh, so that just happens. And then we had zero day support for Mac OS Catalina. Uh, we've had that for a couple of years now where um, when Apple releases their new operating system, we're ready to go. 
version 8.5 uh, this last summer. Support for Apple mobile devices. We brought in iOS and iPadOS management into Configuration Manager on top of our MDM, right? So we can have uh, user-initiated MDM enrollment, uh, reporting of hardware, um, mobile config files, the policy that gets deployed, uh, the configuration profiles. Uh, we can also extend that out for enforcement of certain security postures you may want to have. Uh, then, of course, wipe and lock, right? If the uh, device, you know, is lost or stolen, uh, we can do that and make sure that uh, there's no corporate IP left on that. Uh, support for uninstalled deployment type of applications, including VPP applications. Well, it's kind of odd, right? Uh, Max, right, their consumer products brought into the enterprise. There really isn't a way or hadn't been a way to do a removal from a, a console like Configuration Manager to take an application off. So we kind of dug deep into the, the native workflows and hooked that into the process now. Instead of telling the user, yeah, just drag that to the recycle bin, which really isn't too uh, enterprise, um, we can now just create a collection and uninstall collection and remove applications from uh, from devices that we've already pushed those apps out to. All right. And then let's see, reporting of uh, device uh, serial numbers, we just made a little bit more ubiquitous of, of uh, how we can grab uh, some of that information. Helps us with, you know, figuring out Apple Care and, you know, those types of things. Uh, reporting of MDM user approval status uh, for Mac computers so we can uh, see if, if that's taken place. Um, we did a little bit of uh, kind of replumbing of a few of our key pieces uh, that Microsoft, um, that we attached to Microsoft. Um, so our MDM uh, is now tightly integrated with IIS. That's more of a Apple request, I think it was that, you know, you have to tie an MDM into a web service. So if you're a Microsoft shop, of course, you're going to have IIS. So that's the one that we connect to, right? We're not going to say, yeah, stand up a server, put Tomcat on it. Um, no, 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 no. We're going to use what you have. Um, so that's another benefit of being able to plug into uh, Configuration Manager is we're going to consume a lot of the resources that you've already invested in. Uh, support for wildcard SSL certificates for MDM and IBCM. Okay, let's move on. What else are we going to look at here? 8.6, um, just this last month uh, uh, in November, right? Zero day support for Mac OS 11, Big Sur. So another uh, zero day support. Uh, MDM enrollment, this is a huge one. Um, it's mandatory for managing Big Sur um, operating system. Uh, you, in the past, we were able to deliver mobile config files as configuration items uh, to endpoints without an MDM. It wasn't a requirement. Big Sur is now a requirement for, for an MDM enrollment uh, to manage um, that operating system. So if you have folks that are, you know, just kind of champing at the bit, they want to get Big Sur going, you're going to need to push that off until you can get an MDM set up or else you will, will not be able to manage it. It just, there is no way to do that. All right. And we do have an MDM that's a, a part of the, um, the full service of what we do for Parallels Mac Management. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, support for Microsoft Configuration Manager 2006. So the branch versions um, were at 2006. Actually, um, we're at 2011, right? Um, our developers have been getting ready for a, a minor release in December. And so they just kind of it kind of back channel just kind of let me know that yeah 2011 will be ready um, probably mid-December ability to enforce specific versions of TLS used by Parallels Mac Management so I, I think we have some um, uh, uh, some registry edits that we can do uh, to make sure that we're as secure as you need to be and then as there I noticed uh, down there at the bottom scheduled update in December so then we have another big one coming out uh, Q1 of, of 2021 so we do a couple of major uplifts um, that are you know big version changes a year, you know, every year, two of those, and then some minor releases. So we, we're, we're definitely on a growth path and, and, and keeping the product uh, relevant. All right, a little bit more here since Apple has kind of been blowing up the, the news feeds lately. Um, ARM-based Macs, probably wondering about that. Where are we? Well, uh, we actually have some ARM development underway for everything that we do at Parallels. I mean, our Parallels business desktop, um, Parallels Mac management, just about anything that we do at Parallels is get, kind of getting a rewrite, right? So we've, we've had... Um, the Mac Mini development kits as soon as uh, Apple released those. Uh, you yeah, know, we've got our Macs and different, you know, diff development centers that we have around the world. So we, we are underway with our ARM um, versions uh, of different uh, products, including Parallels Mac Management. Uh, so those will be, you know, announced 
I'm not sure if it'll be later this this year, 2020 or into 2021, but we are under development for that. Um, the Intel chipset um, are, is still out there and there, you can still buy Intel chipsets. People think that since ARM, the Apple Silicon product um, was announced, that that was like the end of Intel. Well, it's not. You can still buy brand new you know, straight from the factory Intel chipset max. Uh, and that's going to be that way for at least two years uh, worth of support. You know, that could go a little bit longer, could be a little bit less. Apple, you know, is going to control that, uh, that pipeline. Uh, but the ARM devices are picking up steam and we're getting a lot more, um, you know, they're getting a lot more notice in the news. So I think, um, you know, people are really starting to see that SOC, the system on a chip, is a pretty cool pairing of not only the CPU, the GPU, and the memory. Um, so it's like, where's the bus, right? Where's the uh, where's the bridge? The, it, 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 Apple basically has taken out all the constraints uh, that the Intel chipset um, was, you know, kind of their bottleneck, right? So um, pretty cool platform. Um, so it, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot more development around that. But you know, just kind of keep that in mind. There's going to be a couple more years of Intel that, that's going to be out there. And you know, nobody's forcing you to go to ARM. <laughs> you know, you can keep going with Intel if you want. But, you know, just remember that runway will, you know, kind of disappear after a couple of years. Um, so uh, just a little bit of information there. Yeah, this is from Apple Business, uh, excuse me, actually just Business Insider, if you want to you know, take a look at that online. Got a couple more things here. <laughs> Big Sur M1 News, are you ready? Right. Um, yeah, and really pay attention to the vintage of your Macs if you're going to Big Sur, uh, because there were some late 2013s and 2014s that got bricked uh, when people tried to install Big Sur. And if that happens in your enterprise, not a fun thing, right? Uh, so really make sure um, before uh, folks just start doing this, right? And that's there's usually those early adopters that kind of push the curve and push the tickets. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and then over in the other side there, internet recovery on Apple Silicon is dead. Well, pretty much imaging uh, is dead to max for enterprise mass deployment um, when it comes to Big Sur. Uh, so re recovery, um, you, you really want to think about things like Apple's device enrollment program uh, to get images uh, put back onto a Mac. That's Apple's preferred method where you buy a Mac from a hardware reseller and then it'll come with the operating system, but it'll come ready to accept policy uh, that could already be, um, you know, uh, at the ready, right? So policy cycle would kick off uh, from the MDM. Uh, since we attach it to configuration manager, that could be configuration items. So um, yeah, just, you know, yeah, Big Sur is a, is a mind bender, right? There's just so much happening with that as far as MDM management, and then also not able to deploy um, traditional kind of modular OSD type images out to it. So uh, we're looking for stronger ties with our MDM and um, the debt process. And so that'll be a major uplift, uh, you know, first part of uh, 2021 uh, with that next uh, release that we have coming up. All right, I think that's enough. Let's move over into Configuration Manager. All right, uh, we're gonna be looking at um, how do we find Macs, where do they show up? So we're gonna look at some management pieces here uh, for configuration, what happens uh, when a Mac shows up, where does it show up? And then uh, look at some policy, look at applications packages, uh, a little bit on software updates, a little bit on imaging, not much, um, because it's a hard one to do in a live setting like this, knowing that we don't have that much time. Uh, but then again, there's, again, those curveballs that Apple's been throwing at us. So uh, we'll do a little bit of image talk, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get going here. And remember, if you have questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and throw those into the QA chat window. All right, here's our lovely 2020, yeah, 2006 uh, branch version of uh a configuration manager um, administration. We have a parallels node here. When we do our install, we include um, extensions. So color, branding, icons, things like that, that lets you know there's Mac stuff you can do there. All right, so within this management area, we've got discovery methods for network discovery. Uh, based off of your boundary groups and boundaries, we can configure automated discovery enrollment of Macs into a collection. Uh, so we can get that all set up here as well. Then we've got Mac client uh, installation package download URL. So with this URL, you could drop that on the browser on a Mac, pull down the agent, go through a autom uh, not an automated, but a manual next, next, next install, and then enroll it into config, excuse me, configuration manager. And take a sip of water here. There we go. 
and then get that agent um, talking with communi- uh, with uh, configuration manager and, and show up in a collection. That one's kind of nice to have if you want to do a little bit of testing or maybe um, you deliver that over email. You know, somebody in a chat session says, hey, I need to get my Mac under management. Ha, <laughs> right. That never happens. Nobody ever wants to have their Mac managed. Mobile device management, as I mentioned, um, everything that you're seeing today, uh, the MDM uh, full Mac management and configuration manager, this is all included in the per seat cost, right? So um, we put together an MDM proxy and then also an MDM service uh, that um, will bind all this stuff together so we can then you know, use the, the MDM kind of as an SCCM instance unto itself for Mac management. And then we tie that to configuration manager. So configuration manager becomes the front end. You don't have yet another console somewhere else where you go and have to manage Macs. We bring all that into configuration manager for, you know, visibility for deployment um, of, you know, apps, packages, you know, patching, whatever um, that we need to do on the Mac. Device enrollment program, DEP. Uh, that's where you go to your hardware reseller and say, yeah, I know that uh, we're living in Big Sur um, kind of times. Uh, we can't do any imaging, so let's drop ship me a Mac and it'll have the latest operating system on it. It'll be ready to accept automated policy uh, from the MDM and then it will be enforced. It'll deliver apps, packages, you know, everything that it needs to have out of configuration manager tied to the MDM. And then that's how the Mac gets managed. That's device enrollment program. You know, if you really think about it, that's what uh, Microsoft went to with uh, Intune and Autopilot, right? So that's uh, that's device enrollment program. You have to go to a hardware reseller and specify, yeah, send me a DEP Mac. Volume purchase program, VPP, if you've got a, um, a, a corporate uh, ID, a corporate um, Apple ID and a token, we can bring those back here, synchronize it so that way we pull in your purchase data. Then we can create application um, packages and then deliver those out to Mac endpoints. And it does handle the tracking of, um, you know, how many, um, you know, of certain you know, books or whatever else that you've downloaded applications. Um, and then, you know, it'll depreciate that. And we, uh, we, we track all that here. All right. Uh, the last one here, IBCM, internet-based client management. You know what? I'm going to go back into, uh, PowerPoint. So let's see if I click there. There we go. IBCM, uh, internet-based client management gives us a way to manage a Mac external from your on-prem, um, management. Right. So folks working from home, you've got people working at the kitchen table, coffee table, wherever they're at. If they're not on prem, their devices still need to have full management. Right. So uh, we can configure within the DMZ uh, IBCM um, MDM proxy and also our regular proxy. Uh, all that's configured with IIS. Uh, we need to have a management point and distribution point, And you can kind of see here um, we do connect that for synchronization of on prem content into the DMZ. And then from there, we get a 443 um, HTTPS connection out to the Internet to that external Mac. So you've got a secure connection. They get all their content from here. They never go in here. So we can keep all that traffic in the DMZ and still retain a fully managed Mac. Now you're probably going, oh, what about cloud management gateway? Well, that's only for Microsoft. Uh, it's not an open API. We can't develop against it. Actually, nobody can develop against that except for Microsoft. So we've gone with IBCM. It kind of gives Macs their own swim lane, right? You can keep the Mac traffic wholly unto itself right there in this one IBCM uh, connection. So pretty easy to set up within the DMZ. Um, we've got a deployment guide and we also have our administrative guide walks through all the topology, all of the um, you know ports, um, architecture, everything um, that you need to get that set up. All right, back into configuration manager. I think that's it. Let's go into assets and compliance. Um, got an all Mac OS 10 systems co- um, collection here, and that was built out during the install of Parallels Mac management. And if we head on over here to rules, we'll take a look at our query statement and see that we are using SQL, right? If we're going to live inside of configuration manager, yeah, that we're going to, we're going to use the same SQL that uh, your windows devices are using. Um, so we're not going to ask you to stand up a Mac mini with SQL lights, you know, to be a, your inventory server. You know, you've already got a distribution point, a management point. You've got the site code DB. Um, you know, it's connected to active directory. You know, basically everything that configuration manager does, you know, we need to know about it and then be able to take advantage of a lot of the 
workflows. So including enrolling a Mac into Configuration Manager and then building a collection. So we're doing a like PMA, that's our Parallels Mac agent. So we're looking for software here. And we're also looking for more software, the Mac operating system. And then, you know, another one down here, you know, all these like and wild cards here. So anything like Mac OS or Mac space OS space X or 10, right? So with all that, we can uh, build out a collection. Now, nice way to find everything all at once, but you know, you probably have ways that you'd like to manage different from that. So, you know, you can definitely take advantage of all the other um, rules here that you could create your own queries and then build out the collections any way that you'd like. So this is really the first time, you know, once we get an agent on a Mac, it's got to show up somewhere. So we're going to drop it into this all Mac OS 10 systems collection. Well, since we're here, we do take advantage of maintenance windows on the collection for Macs. So give it a name, set the date, time, when or you know when you do or don't want any activity happening on those devices other than the end user, you know, doing their best work. They don't want notifications and you know have to deal with things that they're not really sure what to do with anyway. So um, we can set those uh, to the side with a maintenance window. All right. Tons of stuff happening here inside of my little Mac OS 10 systems collection. Um, I just uh, went through setting this up today uh, to get uh, Big Sur going. And uh, I opened up uh, into my home, you know, right? Everybody's working from home. So my lab uh, here at home, I've got uh, uh, a couple of my uh, physical Macs showing up in here. And then I also have some virtual machines down here on the bottom. So what you see here uh, are IP addresses there with the underscores. We I couldn't connect to those. Uh, for some reason, either SSH was closed down or I didn't have an admin account. Uh, so it, it's telling me that there's a couple of pieces missing. And then I did get some net BIOS names here. So um, I was able to get a little bit further in. But as you can see here, there's no client. Uh, you know, there's no client activity. Um, so uh, these devices are seen on my network. So this is kind of nice, right? If, if you're doing Mac management for the first time and you have no idea what your footprint is, right? A lot of times we work with customers and they're so naive, right? They think, you know, we don't have any Macs. Well, we think we have some Macs, you know, and you get five guys in the room and they've got five answers, right? And and then they, they do a discovery and come to find out, oh, uh, yeah, we, we've got 250 Macs. We had no idea, you know, across the globe. Um, so this is kind of nice to see. Yeah, at least you kind of get the handle of, you know, I've got X amount and, you know, now I need to do a little bit of work to make sure we get an agent onto it. And as I mentioned, um, we've got, uh, uh, oh, you know what? I forgot one. Let's go back underneath administration. Not only do we have internet um, discovery uh, underneath uh, hierarchy up here, underneath discovery methods, we can go to Active Directory System Discovery, the very same one if you're doing Windows Discovery, right? Um, we can browse into your OU structure and uh, look for devices, right? So if you've got maybe, you know, computers or maybe you built out a Mac OU, um, we can point to that. Every device in it would then be tagged uh, to get the agent installed, silent install, no notice to the end user. Uh, so, um, yeah, network discovery or even active directory discovery. Now, Macs don't have to be bound to AD to be managed. It's just a, a nice happenstance or byproduct. If they are, we can get an agent onto it and bring it back into the collection. Whew, God, I didn't miss that. All right, so down at the bottom here, these are the ones that we're going to look at today. And actually, we'll be looking at this one. Uh, this is... Um, the Big Sur uh, virtual machine that I have. So all three of these are virtual machines. Everything else up here, these are all physical devices. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be taking a look at that. So you notice um, we do get some telemetry coming in, uh, of course, right? Client, yes. Active, yes. Well, let's do one more thing here. Let's go down to the bottom here for... Do, do, do. What am I looking for? Oh, operating system. There we go. And we'll take a look here. So there we go. We've got a Catalina uh, 1154, and then we've got a Mojave, and then there's the Mac OS 11. We go to 11 now. So that's my Big Sur uh, device there. So inventory took place. It's now showing me, you know, versioning on, on the software, the operating system there. So then again, active. Yes, yes, yes. And then down below here, policy, heartbeat, hardware scan. Um, so we get that. So we get the idea, you know, we either have healthy Macs or we don't, you know, either they're in a collection or they're being managed or they're not, you know, so we do get some kind of uh, asset intelligence going here. So we get a better understanding what's what's happening. So let's do a little bit of right click investigation on our device here. Going to go down here, parallels Mac management tools, uh, some right click tools we bring in so we can connect over VNC. 
Uh, we get out to a device, log in underneath administrative credentials, and then do whatever work we need to do from the console. Um, so it's not shadowing, screen sharing, just got to let you know that uh, right up front there. Um, a lot of other tools can do that, but this is really for the admin that just needs to get in, get out, they're done. Uh, SSH is putty that's built in, so we can get out to terminal, run the gambit, run the table, uh, whatever you need to do from a terminal standpoint. Drop somebody out of root down to standard user, you know, reboot it, shut it down, uh, whatever the uh, the terminal command can do, you can do it remotely here. Refresh policy, um, evaluation uh, of configuration items, all that stuff can happen remotely. We do fall in line with the same policy cycle, uh, so this is just an ad hoc way if, you know, you just got that feeling. A lot of us, you know, operational, you know, uh, administrators get those feelings every once in a while. It's like, oh, something's going on here, you know, and you'd want to make sure that your CIs, your configuration items are, are really doing what they're supposed to be doing. Pull inventory up. Maybe something's changed on that Mac and you want to pull it into inventory. Uh, scripts, uh, we can deploy those out per device or up at the collection level. Um, looks like I'm locked up here. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, doink, doink, doink. Nope, it's going to have to come back to me here. Um, so we get a right click. We can um, deploy a script in a window, cut and paste. There we go. That took a while. So we browse out. If we were going to bring in a file, bash, python, ruby, um, .sh, um, basically any script interpreter that runs natively on a Mac, you know, if, if you can, well, a lot of them now, uh, you have to add uh, to Mac OS. Uh, at one point, you know, everything was already built in, but now they've kind of gone to kind of an a la carte thing if you want maybe Python, you've got to download it, put it on. Uh, but anyway, we can, uh, if you've got some files that you want to throw out a Mac, you can do that. X, uh, edit a script here. We can cut and paste, uh, put something in here that you want to make a change either at per device or back up at the collection level. And then it's just an execution of kind of next, next, next. Um, actually, let me just throw some stuff in here. There we go. And then next, and then we can run with administrative privileges. Uh, we can pull some accounts that we've already noted inside of configuration manager, some, uh, um, higher level, maybe administrative accounts that are local to the device, or maybe even an AD account, right? Just browse into AD, find the account that has rights on the Mac. If it is bound to AD, and then you can keep uh, going here with executing the script. It'll give you a rundown that it's, you know, tried to connect if it was successful or if it failed. Uh, and then if you do run the same right click um, script tool at this level, at the collection level, it'll hit every device and give you pass fail on every device in the collection. All right, let's continue with our right click tour here. Uh, let's see, executing script, install parallels, Mac client. So maybe in the background over here, some of these that don't have a client on them, um, if these were really healthy devices, uh, but I know that th there's something missing on it. Um, if I, you know, if, if everything was lined up and everything was good, but it just didn't have the agent, I could then right click and do this install parallels Mac client again, utilizing local accounts or an AD account. And then we've got a couple of options. We can be the hammer. We don't really care. We're just going to install it or you can be nice. Do the uninstall, then install it and then get it back into a healthy state. And let's see what else do we have here. One last one. Oh yeah, Apple's wipe and lock. Have to have the MDM for this. Uh, so this is our way, or Apple actually Apple's way of uh, either just you know simply locking the device so you can't get onto it, or going to the extra step if it's lost or stolen and you do need to wipe it, you can do that. Turn it into a metal brick. There's nothing left on it, and then the lock code gets uh, established on it. We collect that lock code, um, escrow that, keep it in case maybe the good guys out there return the device, and then we can unlock it. Put a new operating system on it. Uh, so that's uh, Apple's wipe and lock process. Going to do a quick look here at properties and see we have a wipe and lock tab and a file vault tab. So uh, there we go. I'm not have I don't have anything under lock status or user information because I haven't pushed anything out um, to wipe my Macs. I, I don't really want to do that for demo purposes, right? Destroy all my heart, my good work here. So anyway, uh, we would have escrowed uh, the unlock code here, a little bit more information. So if we did have that unlock code, we could copy to clipboard, print it off, hand it to a help desk tech, maybe that's got chain of custody for some of the higher security functions. They could unlock that device, put a new image onto it, or maybe just unlock it. Maybe that's the only thing you did was to lock it. File Vault. We do File Vault 2 disk encryption. This one has a personal key on it, one key that uh, is only good for that one device. So uh, we also have institutional key schemes here. So that's one key that rules the world, right? You can log on to any one of your Macs if they're all underneath the institutional key structure. So if you did need to decrypt, you can hit that copy to clipboard and then uh, hand it again out to that uh, trusted help desk associate. They could log in for somebody. Maybe they completely forgot their password or maybe 
maybe it is some function where you need to decrypt the device before you actually do anything with it. All right, uh, let's see, variables, let's look at deployments, anything that we've pushed out to the device, apps, packages, configuration items, software updates um, can all be pushed out there, um, will show up here rather than going to monitoring and reporting, um, you can definitely take a look at it per device, and then all the normal stuff we see, right, when and where we connected, um, agent time, uh, site code information, there's my parallels agent version, let's see, what else do we have in here, I think we've got uh, IPv4 and 6 information, then we're going to get some NetBIOS information. There we go. And then our Mac operating system, there's 1011. All right, so that's properties. So let's do a little deeper dive on this and start a resource explorer. So I'm going into new territory since this is the first day running on my uh, big Sur virtual machine here. Let's expand that out. So, you know, we can't walk out there anymore, right? It's in if you know, you're like a lot of the, the companies out there, you know, help desk isn't able to walk out to the office or the desk or the cube or whatever. We have to have ways to get information back from devices if we can't be there, be hands on uh, to support our folks like this. So um, here we go. We've done a you know inventory and now we want to see what's on this device. So disk encryption, it's just a high level look telling us, yep, it's got the personal key. It is encrypted. That looks good. Uh, installed applications, anything that we've pushed out to the device, um, or anything that came with the operating system, right? So it's a combination of two, you know, any packages, applications, and then just native stuff that was on the Mac to begin with. So this is all filterable. Uh, you could go through here, type in parts of names. Uh, so there's my Parallels Mac Management Agent. Double click on it if you want to get this nice little tab uh, with uh, with everything on there. Um, so yeah, you can definitely you know look up things that you know, you would have had to send somebody out there to to you know ask a few questions. Computer system information. There's our device name, um, user on the device there. There's our um, our system information, uh, the serial number uh, of the device. Now let's go down here. Network login profile. Really like this one. So uh, we're able to see who's logged in and what types of accounts have been used. Oh boy, yeah, you might uh, you might want to get rid of that root. <laughs> All right, um, you probably want to have standard users, and you probably really want to see some type of a uh, you know device name or username there, and hopefully it isn't like. You know, the kids, you know, the husband, the wife, you know, somebody, the spouse, the partner, right? You really want to make sure that uh, this will give you some a little bit more operation intelligence of, you know, who's on the device. You know, if you start seeing lots of logins on somebody's remote use, uh, business use device, you may want to have a conversation. But this will let you know, you know, who's been logging in when they logged on, logged off, you know, how many times uh, then, you know, you can do some some conversations if you need to do that. And then down below, hardware history. Now, again, I've just spun some of these up, so we're not going to get uh, a lot to see here, but this will collect, I think it's about three months worth of information uh, that you potentially could have to go back on. Uh, so if you were looking at uh, installed applications, uh, you'd definitely have more than uh, two days worth here. Uh, you'd actually see back into um what is it? Uh, maybe uh, September, right? And then you could go through here and you know do a dive and, and see you know what's been removed, inventoried since last time, uh, things that haven't changed. Uh, so if you did find something was missing, you could you know you'd be able to find that out now, and then go uh, maybe put a, a package together or, or you know just deliver something you already had in inventory that you need to push out there. All right, so that's a nice little deep dive there on inventory that we can see uh, without actually having to walk out there. All right, I think, I think, I think, I think that's it for our collection. Let's move on down into um, assets, compliance. Yeah, we're still there. Let's take a look at uh, configuration items. So this is probably one of the, the biggest area a lot of um, Windows enterprises have issues with, right? How do we keep a Mac in, uh, or how do we even put a Mac into a policy state? How do we enforce... Um, you know, policy in a way that makes it a institutional asset, right? It, instead of being that stickered, you know, shiny silver or kind of space gray device that people kind of festoon with all kinds of stickers, right? It, it is a business asset. We want folks to do their best work on it, but still it needs to be managed. So we can use configuration items in baselines against collections of Macs. So here's my really easy list here of uh, different uh, things I want to do to manage uh, with um, configuration items. And there's my Corp Mac baseline. And so if I open that up and look at properties and then go to the evaluation conditions, there's everything that I'm doing to put this into a very, it's a well-managed device. It's kind of well-managed, but you know, you may want to add more in there. We've got customers in, you know, medical, right? And they have HIPAA requirements and they've, they've, they're, 
configuration items, you know, go on for days of all the things that they have to do uh, to make sure that Mac is in a good uh, managed state. So File Vault, we're making sure that, that that's uh, being enforced for full disk encryption, blocking the App Store, right? Don't want people going out there. They don't need to download stuff because we can push it out as an app or a package right here from Configuration Manager. They don't need to hunt for their own software. Blacklist software. Maybe there's titles that you don't want to run on the device. Blocking pref panes. This is the control panel area on a Mac. You don't want people configuring network resources or adding users, things like that. Disabling USB. That would be for USB sticks for mass storage. Um, you know, anything uh, with an external drive, that kind of thing. It's to let other USB ports work for maybe printers or other peripherals, just not mass storage. Firefox, we're not deploying it, we're configuring it. So if you take the generic Firefox download, pretty wide open, pretty scary. Um, so this will wrap policy around it in the way that you want to secure it, add bookmarks, all that kind of stuff. Disable the guest account, right? Even the guest account's kind of interesting on a Mac in that you anybody can log into a guest account, but it destroys everything once you log out. Right. So it kind of gets rid of the trail. Uh, but maybe we don't even want that to happen. So we can lock that up. Screensaver, right? After so many seconds, yeah, especially if folks are working at the kitchen table, you know, you want that thing to kick in pretty soon, you know, because if they're not only working from home, they may be schooling from home, right? And the, the kids that used to be in class are now around that same kitchen table, right? And, uh, oh, cool. I get to see what's on my dad's Mac or my, you know, my parents' Mac. Um, so, um, having a screensaver on there is kind of important. All right, so that's what I'm pushing out to my Mac. Now, how do we get those? Uh, up here on the top, we've got our Parallels extensions, branding color icon, lets you know there's Mac stuff to do. Uh, we can either build them here with um, this small set of profiles that are built in, very small. I'm not even going to go over these because they're, there's just not that many there. And we are making a big change come uh, 2021 first quarter, adding this iMazing profile editor from this dropdown where we can build policy. Uh, so let me go ahead and launch this so you can get an idea. So this will handle Mac OS, iOS, and tvOS. We will be focusing on Mac OS and iOS. So this is the group policy for managing Macs. This will build mobile config files that we can bring back here into Configuration Manager for configuration items, right? So these are all the approved Apple uh, policies that we can manage a Mac with or iOS, iPad OS. And then down below that, it even goes into uh, um, kind of community-based policy uh, that you can add for, you know, configuring Google Chrome or Firefox like I did. I deployed Firefox uh, configurations with this utility. So this will give you um, a lot of very enterprise worthy settings here that the browser already has on it that you can then configure to make sure that it's it's going to meet your needs, including the bookmarks. You know, if you you know, you know you have internal ones or external ones uh, that you need to add. So um, yeah, lots of stuff here. I mean, even uh, into the Microsoft territory, when we get down here a little bit further, there we go. So a lot of it, there's Edge for you know configurations, or maybe if, if you've deployed Office, you want the apps to behave in certain ways, or maybe setting up OneNote or OneDrive connected to your SharePoint. So there's a lot of policy that could be brought into play. Uh, one of the things that uh, we'll see on my Mac once we jump down there is from um, the App Store, right? Maybe we don't want folks going out there because we can, as I mentioned, we can deliver volume purchase program, apps, and packages um, natively out of Configuration Manager. So there's really no need for going to the App Store. And we can also patch. We've got a SUP role that goes in uh, your WSUS infrastructure. So we can then say, hey, you don't need to even you know think about going to the app store uh so let's require you know them to be an admin if they're going to do anything at the app store level you know because again if we're going to give uh you know mac management over here in a very enterprise way um we can even get folks down to standard user mode where they don't need to be an admin if we can fully manage that device and give it the same kind of care and feeding that we give windows devices for endpoint management so a lot of things we can restrict or allow here and this will be the policy that keeps folks out of the app store all right. So then we can uh, save these things. Um, something to consider um, in creating that mobile config file. Well, there's the top here for a general. Um, not only do we deliver the payloads, there's a general settings area here where you give it a name and description. Um, you can even set um, per mobile config file password. So uh, you can lock this down, you know, even further. Uh, things like never remove uh, from the MDM where that policy won't 
you know, you can't remove it unless you take it out of the configuration item. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, ways here to wrap a lot of you know, really nice tight security around it. So this is amazing uh, policy editor that'll just be built in uh, to configuration manager. Uh, nope, I don't want to save it. There we go. So yeah, that'll just be a call from right in here. All right, uh, file vault two. Here we go. Give it a name, description, personal or institutional. Personal is um, a single key for a single device, right? One key, one random you know, one key per device. Institutional is one key that covers everything. Um, makes it easy. We've got customers in the multiples of thousands of seats um, and their help desk folks, you know, can go to any device. Um, but the downside is, right, if that gets compromised, the bad guys can go to any device, right? So think about that. Uh, I would definitely suggest the personal. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like on, on my Mac as well. So um, yeah, why don't we go ahead and go there? Do, do, do. Here is my Mac. Let's get on to Big Sur. There we go. Nice, lovely colors. Nice new icons down there at the bottom. And let's take a look at a little bit of policy here. So there's the App Store. That's my policy blocking that there. You don't have rights to do that. Now, what else here? Well, if you've got Office 365, the G Suite, you probably don't want to, you know, <laughs> you know, have to go into support tickets over the built-in mail system inside of uh, the Mac OS operating system. Well, FaceTime might be kind of draconian to block that. But again, if you've got corporate communication, you know, platforms, Skype, you know, Teams, um, you know, whatever it is, Zoom, um, you know, Ring Central, WebEx, whatever, you probably don't need FaceTime. And, you know, Basically, just say, hey, folks, use your own personal phone or your own personal tablet or or whatever if you want some of these features, right? So we can we can definitely lock those things down. Messages, right? Yeah, use your own phone for messages instead of using the system that we're, you know, having to manage every day. All right, so that's a little bit of policy there. Let's jump into, um, oh, yeah, a little bit of truth in advertising. So there it is, uh, Mac OS Big Sur. And again, this is a virtual machine. So there's some stuff there that it's not pulling in, but it does know that it's a 2.9 something. <laughs> All right. So, uh, there we go. There's, um, our Big Sur. Uh, let's see what else, what else, what else, what else? Let's go into system preferences. A little bit more management happening here. So here's what I was talking about system preferences being blocked. Um, so yeah, you don't want people going out to software updates and downloading something, right? So if we're, if we're keeping people maybe on Catalina and not even going to Big Sur, uh, having this ghosted out like this, they can't download Big Sur. And then if you blocked USB ports, they couldn't sideload it either. Uh, so a lot of things here we don't want people, you know, going to network settings and setting up a VPN or maybe, um, you know, going to users and groups and adding uh, family members, right, since they're working from home, giving somebody their own login on a business use machine. Not a good thing, right? And then a lot of these things, we just don't want folks configuring. I mean, these are ticket creating, you know, configurations here. We don't we don't want to spin up more work for us. But then there are things we leave open, right? Uh, general, right? We need mouse, trackpad, you know, keyboard display, uh, you know, you know, things, you know, like accessibility, uh, things that are pretty general, you know, we'll leave those open so anybody can get to those things. Now, back in that iMazing profile editor, there is a system preference policy. You could ghost every one of these or you could fully hide them. Somebody would open up system preferences to find nothing in it. Uh, so you can get as, you know, locked down as you want to be. All right, here is our profiles. This is where those policies actually reside um, once we deliver them as CIs. Now, we do have to have first have uh, to even manage Big Sur. We have to have an MDM. And then here's the MDM policy that lets us own this as administrators. So I can erase all data on this computer. I can wipe it, lock it. I can do anything that I need to do institutionally out of configuration manager tied to uh, the MDM. So this is the first line of defense right here um, that you can then fully own this device with other management uh, policies. So as I mentioned, uh, you can't remove that. There is no minus button there for you to take that off uh, of this system. So this is on here until you take it out as a configuration item. So I've got all my different policies here. Let's see. There's the app store. Uh, those are the app restrictions, right? Face, uh, FaceTime chess. So I didn't go into that one. Mail and then messages that were all blocked. And let's see, students. Yeah, this is the one for system preferences. I got this from a guy up at Emily Carr University. Uh, there's a GitHub repository of all of his policy. And thought, hey, this is pretty cool because here's exactly what it blocks, right? These are all the different um, system preferences uh, that are not available um, for anybody to, you know, 
<laughs> generate more tickets. All right, so that's that there. Um, let's go back into Configuration Manager. We'll go into Apps and Packages, and then we'll we'll bounce back over here and take a look at um, how we deliver apps to uh, to Mac OS here. All right, so those are Configuration Items, Baselines against a Collection, and then you get that. All right, Apps. Let's go into a couple different models here. And I don't think I created a package for us, but I can still walk through it. Um, right click, create a package. I mean, that's really all you do here. Uh, and it's kind of native workflow, you know? I mean, it's the same program wizard. And we're gonna use this package contain source files. We're gonna browse and look for the folder that has a DMG, PKG, um, you know, uh, .sh, ISO, um, a lot of the native installer types uh, we can use here. And just move this along, next, next, next. And then for deployment, uh, we have a couple of ways to do these, uh, either as administrative context or user context. User would be next, 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 right? You could actually see the app pop up, which would be kind of scary, right? You're just working, doing your own stuff here, and then all of a sudden, boom, <laughs> something opens up, right? Um, so uh, you could also do silent, and then they wouldn't see that happen. Administrative uh, context and the silent switch would give you a silent just install it kind of proposition. All right, so let's look at applications. Now, I do have a bunch of those. So I've pushed all these out to my Mac well, actually, I pushed out metadata to the Mac because I made these available, not required, and then they show up in an application portal. But let me just kind of walk through a little bit of this here. So create an application. It's not MSI. It's Mac OS X. And then down below there, there's volume purchase program that we added. So you could even point to that to create uh, the application wizard and then deploy those uh, to where we're going to eventually end up here in our application portal that gets installed to every Mac for available content. So there's Mac OS 10, and we're going to browse out. You think you're going to find native installer types, right? DMG, PKG, ISO, you know, .sh or whatever. Microsoft created a little utility called CMAP Util uh, that we can uh, mount on a Mac and then uh, get detection methods that Apple payloads don't care about, right? So if we're going to use Configuration Manager, let's utilize it, right? So for detection methods, we can figure out, is it an old app? Is it the new app? Um, and then it, its logic can decide whether or not to uninstall the old and install the new or just bypass it, right, if it's the, the same version, right? So the CMAP utility is really helpful for creating those detection methods. And then uh, we bring back uh, the application once it has that .cm it. MAC extension. Basically what you do is you put the CMAP utility on a Mac and then run a terminal command with where is the, the app, where do you want to put it, and then the detection method switch. About 15 seconds later, it's got a CMAC um, extension on it. So if we go back up here, here's all my, my CMACs that I've developed uh, for pushing out to uh, our application portal. So next, 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 finish all that up. Deployment, that's where we get um, things like uh, available or required and then, um, you know, that's kind of the fork in the road there. So now let's go back to our Mac and take a look at that. So here we go. Let's go down here. This is our application portal. This gets installed with our agent uh, with every Mac. And so it's empty until we start pushing available content to it. This is metadata. Um, so we're not going to dump, you know, tons of you know, content onto the device until the end user pulls it down by hitting the install button because we give the application admin rights, not the end user. We give those over to uh, uh, to the application that gets installed. So the, they won't get an elevated ask during the install process, you know, for administrative rights. So that's another reason why you get somebody down to standard user. They don't need to be an administrator. So all this content pushed out of uh, configuration manager. We can build categories. Uh, line up software that will show up here. Um, so yeah, if somebody needs a web browser, you know, of course, Safari's built on, uh, but others like Google Chrome or Firefox or Opera, uh, Microsoft Edge, that's the new Chromium based one there. Um, so yeah, just hit the install button and pull that down. Uh, other things we can do here in the uh, application portal, we can do non OSD task sequences. So we can push that out. Um, so that would be like a, an app or a package. And then policy, so mobile config files, scripts, we can bind a Mac to Active Directory, variables, all that stuff, uh, along with volume purchase program could show up here. You could have a utility folder with some scripts in it or some software that maybe uh, the help desk can help somebody you know, diagnose some issues or, or get installed uh, for the help desk to, to then do their work that they need to do. Um, so, you know, in these remote work scenarios, right, maybe that would help out, you know, the help desk, you know, do their jobs remotely if, if they have their own category here. All right. So that's uh, application portal built into the agent when it gets downloaded um, and is just waiting for us to push stuff to it. All right. 
And also down below here, there's our Parallels Mac agent. Shows up down there in System Preferences. A lot of dates, times, when and where we connected. Did we get policy? Uh, there's our agent version right there. We've got a little drop down there uh, for pushing inventory up. Uh, we can build log files if we need to get a ticket going. Uh, we can also ad hoc connect with Configuration Manager, see if there's any new apps or a new policy that needs to be applied to it. So that's all there. Now, if I actually had IBCM, Internet-Based Client Management, that's what I would have there. I'd have a URL um, that would be um, where it would connect into the DMZ with the management point, the proxy, uh, IBCM, MDM, all those acronyms <laughs> floating around in the DMZ doing their work for us. All right. So that's, that's what our agent looks like right there. All right. Apps, packages, we do them both. Software updates. We have a sub role goes on your WSUS infrastructure. And then the agent, our Mac agent does a lot of, uh, you know, investigation to know the operating system, its patch status, because the Mac itself is always connected out to Apple, right? So that relationship will again know what the patch status is. So all that telemetry we can bring up into Configuration Manager and then have it evaluated to tell us what needs to be patched. Well, as you can see here, um, out of uh, all these <laughs> High order of number here. Yikes. That's a lot of uh, Apple content there. 2674. Um, I've got installed, but I don't have any requirements. So that's kind of the marching orders, right? Come into all software updates, see if I have any requireds, and then I know what to patch, you know, because not everything's going to be applicable to Big Sur, to uh, Catalina, Mojave, uh, High Sierra, Sierra. It's all going to be, you know, dependent upon the operating system version, right? So there's a lot of stuff in here that just won't apply, but how do you know that? Well, we know that because the agent tells us that. Uh, it knows, again, the operating system version and its patch status. And then we evaluate all that to know if it's compliant, required, not required, or unknown. We could also go to monitoring and go, you know, get compliance reports there as well if you wanted to do that. So if this were something that needed to be patched, and I'm just going to throw a what if in here. So let's look at um, Catalina. Well, I don't think I have anything that's yeah, that's needed to be patched. But, you know, maybe if I did have uh, the supplemental update and we needed to get that, they went to seven. Usually they don't, right? Six, dot six is usually the highest uh, any of the updates go to, but here's a dot seven. So right click, create a software update group. That's the same thing you do on the Windows side. You can use ADRs, automated deployment rules, and then we can throw that against a collection and patch those Macs. So basically, we're <laughs> we're going to use your stuff that you already know how to do with the same tool set here. So you know we're going to keep this as close to to workflows that Windows administrators already know how to do. All right, so that's patching. WSUS based. Uh, w. We've got a SUP role again that connects out to Apple, brings in metadata, and then we get all that synchronized here. All right, last little bit we're going to talk about um, in uh, this area. I'm going to get into operating systems. I don't, I don't have anything that I'm really going to get into uh, too big of a um, kind of a, a talk here on, other than to say from Catalina down. So Catalina, Mojave, um, uh, High Sierra, Sierra, uh, even down further. I think we, I think we may go to ten, eleven. Um, up to 10, uh, 15, we can build images. We can build OSD images. We can then uh, use task sequences to do an MDT style of deployment. Once we get to Big Sur, all bets off. There's no more OSD for uh, Big Sur. Uh, that's an Apple thing. We'd love to do it. We're not hackers. <laughs> We're not going to go there, right? It's their operating system. It's their process. They'd prefer everybody use um, DEP device enrollment program, which we have. So we can, we can follow what Apple wants us to do, um, you know, as far as, you know, you know, as we need to go. So that's, that's what we're going to do there. Uh, but for those devices or those uh, operating systems underneath uh, Catalina, Mojave and, and downward, we can still build an MDT style process where you capture an image. Um, we can bring that up and turn it into a WIM file. So underneath um, operating systems, uh, we've got an area here for adding a boot, adding a image. And then what it does uh, after we've built that OSD image, it's a system uh, DMG, right? Uh, the configuration manager doesn't know anything about that. So that's what we're doing here by putting this WIM wrapper and extension around it or uh, wrapper around it and extension um, is turning it into a consumable that configuration manager and WDS uh, can use. So prereqs for this, Pixie, WDS and bits, and then we can deliver images out to Mac endpoints from Catalina on down.
So we build a boot, build a restore, get them here. And then once they are built out, uh, we can deploy those to your distribution points. And then um, they are ready for us to build task sequences with. So it's not going to be the Windows task sequence over here. We have create OS 10 task sequence. And then we can give it a name. Uh, let's see here. How about corp uh, image? There we go. And steps. We've got a drop down. We can add uh, the image itself. Uh, we can capture an image, turn that into a task sequence, boot up the Mac, and then capture it, put it up on a server share. And then we can use this one for applying the image. So once we get the, the restore image uh, put out onto the distribution point, if we were to click past this, uh, we could then browse out and find the images that we've got built out. You know, Catalina, Mojave, High Sierra, all could be listed here for you to choose from. And basically what you're doing is building a thin, clean, modular image, maybe 10, 12, 15 gigs. And then we're going to layer on top of it all of the processes here to build that back up into a ready to use device. So uh, we can do applications, packages. These are the, the ones that are already built out. So in this in this case, I could browse into um, the application area that I used to deploy out to the max for the uh, available apps. Right. So I could select one of these and bring it back in um, in whatever I needed to. Right. I could uh, give that a name. Uh, instead of just install. So zoom, there we go. And then description, whatever we wanted to. We also have options here for, uh, you know, different variables, you know, that you may need to add different types of conditions, if statements. Uh, so you can get pretty deep here if you want to. And then packages as well. We would browse in, find the package. Um, we can also give it, uh, before we even get to apps and packages, we probably want to give it, oh, I don't know, what do you think? Maybe a host name. And then um, we can then join the domain. And then, um, you know, get that Mac into Active Directory. Uh, so there's our host name. We use the same variable, uh, the same uh, percent. Um, uh, what is it? OSD. Uh, is it host name or computer name? I think it's computer name. Um, and then percent, right? Um, and then uh, we can set the host name. And then we can go down here to uh, joining the domain. We just browse out, find the domain, bring that back in, and then organizational units. You can dig into your OU structure. Maybe you've got some Mac OUs already here. All right. So then uh, get those uh, fully set up here. We need to have an admin account that has rights to do the work. So that's all been set up. If you, you know, browse into AD, bring the admin account in, verify it. Now, admin groups, we can add maybe your help desk folks. Maybe they've got their own OU with their own accounts, service accounts or help desk accounts. Uh, we can add those. So that way, if they need to log into the device, they've got their credentials to do that. Mobile accounts, I would create a mobile account no matter what the device is. If it's a laptop or a Mac mini or an iMac, Mac Pro, um, you know, MacBook Air, MacBook, whatever, <laughs> build a mobile account. It helps with uh, Active Directory. It also helps with uh, File Vault. Um, so uh, we can do that. All right. So once you get that built out, um, we can deploy this in a couple of different ways. So we would have it here. We could right click on it uh, and then do a deployment. Uh, we can deploy these to um, uh, any collection. And then we can also deploy them to the unknown Mac OS uh, collection where the never been in configuration manager, uh, boot it up and then walk through the restoring of the operating system, putting all the apps, packages, everything back onto it. I mean, so it's just really going to follow suit with very similar uh, MDT style of imaging. Now, T2 Max, right? Um, those came out 2017, 2018 timeframe. Um, those killed NetBoot. They don't even look for it. They have file level encryption. So they're not even, you know, there's no way to take an image from a T2 Mac. Well, we've got we've got some Apple documents plus our own development work that we did uh, within the scope of, you know, supporting the operating system um, that we can build a non T2 image. We can build it from a VM or from older uh, legacy hardware from 2017. And then we can, um, you know, build out a non T2 image and then push that to a T2 Mac. We've got a USB uh, capability, USB stick uh, that we can build to boot a T2 Mac to the task sequence login and then get um, task sequences pulled back uh, down to a T2 Mac. All right, folks. Well, that's it for our demonstration today. So, um, yeah, uh, questions, comments, concerns. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take those right now. If you've got those, throw those into the, the QA chat window. I'm going to drop over here and go back to Q&A. And um, I'm going to flash that once more past that and uh, give you some uh, 
um, information down at the bottom. That's my uh, contact info. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and give me a shout. If you'd like to set up uh, something for a demonstration in your own environment, let us know. We'd love to uh, get this in front of folks. A lot of times you're the first um, kind of explorer out there, right? The one doing, you know, the look-see to maybe find out if this will meet your needs, but then you maybe want to get in, uh, you know, some of your other um, administrators or maybe somebody up the chain to say, hey, this is the stuff that keeps us in configuration manager rather than, you know, getting another tool, another console, another MDM, and it's just all out there like yet another piece of software. All right. Well, thank you, folks. Really appreciate your time, and we'll go ahead and entertain.